Hi, welcome to Criminally Creative, a channel about my various creative endeavors. Today is Friday, December 30th, and this is episode 38. I'm Susan. You can find me on Ravelry as Legal Eagle and on Instagram as Criminally Creative Podcast. Uh, today's episode is going to be a little bit different from normal. This is going to be solely a cross-stitch whip parade and a little bit of talk about my plans for 2023. So I won't be talking about any knitting today, although I have been doing actually a little bit more this month. Um, and I won't be doing any stashing for retirement or any of my other normal stuff. So um, I'm going to apologize in advance. There may be some coughing uh, the video might end up being kind of choppy. If I have coughing fits, I will actually edit those out, but I'm not always smooth about that. So just apologies in advance for any coughing that does get left in and any choppiness of the video. Um, I'm getting my bronchitis for the year and talking irritates my throat and I tend to go into coughing fits. So, um, so what I'm going to do today is take you through all of my current cross stitch whips um, in the order that I started them so chronologically from the order that I started them and show them show you where I am as of the end of 2022 um, if they were started prior to 2022 I will show you where I was at the end of 2021 so you can see how much progress I've made this year um, I am going to tell you what I know off the top of my head about the projects. There will be a link below to my cross stitch spreadsheet, which will tell you what fabric it is, what count fabric, what floss I'm using, you know, if it's the called for, if there's changes I've made, um, full names, pattern designers, if I forget to say that, excuse me. Um, and as, as always, if I don't mention something and it's not in that spreadsheet, you have any questions, please leave a comment or email me. Um, I apologize for all the ums. I'm not going to try to actually account for exactly how many stitches and stuff I did on each project. And there's a couple projects that I have worked on a little bit since the last episode. I'm not going to try to show you what I've just done in the last couple weeks at this point. Um, my next episode in early January, hopefully, I will give you some t statistics overall for like stitches for this year and all that stuff. But I'm not going to worry about that today. It's just going to be about showing you the projects and giving you a visual image of where it was at the end of the year and where it is at the end of last year and where it is now. Um, so anyway, let's get started. Uh, the first one is Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, which is a Heaven and Earth Designs pattern. This is where I was at the end of 2021. And here is where I am now. This is on a 25 count even weave, one over one. I'm also not gonna try to go through uh, showing you all the project bags again because I usually do that in regular episodes uh, with the exception of one project bag which is new that I'll point out when I get there so um the next project is kingdom of books which is uh you can get this I bought this as a kit uh I didn't, the last one I should have shown you also a picture I will have at some point showed you a picture of what treasure hunt bookshelf would look like when it's finished hopefully I'll get this together um this is kingdom of books which will look like this when it's done um I bought, this is a Russian kit I bought online. Mine is um, from a company that translates to like with thy, with thy own hands or something. This is, uh, I am doing this. So Treasure Hunt Bookshelf was started in 2016. This was also started in 2016. And that was my first foray back into cross stitch after years away. And so I, Hadn't really done full coverage before, and I just did, the, this is the kit fabric, which is a 14 count Ada. Um, this is where I was at the end of 2021. And here's where I am now. Um, several people who are doing this are doing it on background fabric that is more the color of this and are not actually stitching this kind of wood grain look. 
had I not already started with that, I might have done that. Um, but I'm just, I'm stitching it as called for, and it's going to be big because I'm doing it on 14 count, which means three strands for most of it. Um, you know, but it is what it is. I'm doing it, and I'm sure I will love it when it's finished. So... Hopefully, I'm going to get it together before as we get go through here. Um, my next project was a start in 2017. It is Happily Ever After by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. This was their 2017 stitch along, which I started as a stitch along and rapidly fell behind. Um, but, so, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting to show you. So, this is what it will look like when it's done. This is what it looked like at the end of 20 at the end of 2021. And here is where it is now. So um, I've got three of the four rows done. There's one more row below this. And uh, this is also on a 14 count Opal Ada. This was a kit as well. It's DMC floss. Um, so I got a lot done on this this year, basically the whole middle row and the third row and I also finished up the top row so I will I'm going to make an effort to finish this into in 2023 since I just have one more row to do, do it should be possible to finish um, this also marks kind of the end of my foray back in the cross stitch that started in 2016 and petered out in early 2017 <coughs> And then, late 2020, I got back in a cross stitch again, and this time it kind of stuck. <laughs> so, uh, in 2020, I started Winter Wonderland. This is a pattern by, his, I'm not going to say this right, Historic Strickmeister. My German's not very good. Um, I'm doing this on the Silk app. This is a picture of what it will look like when it's finished. Um, and this is what it looked like at the end of 2021. I'm trying not to drop my bag. I'll get my, get it ready to hold up. And here's where it is now. Sorry, there's a bit of a glare there. It's not showing you that left side right side left to me right to you i guess um anyway so that is winter wonderland by historic strict meister <laughs> german is such a guttural language and english is not so it's very hard to pronounce things correctly um also started in 2020 is across winter lake which was a is a gecko rouge kit uh, with artwork by Joe Grundy. This is what it will look like when it's finished. Gecko Rouge only sells kits. They do licensed artwork. They do not, <coughs> excuse me, do not um, give you actual DMC numbers, although it is DMC floss as a way of, I think, I believe, helping to protect copyright. So this is where I was at the end of 2021. And this, this is where I am now. I need to figure out if I can get my light more behind my phone, if that will help. Does that help at all? Maybe. So that's a lot of confetti. I'll talk about my plans toward the end. I'm trying to figure out how to get moving a little bit more on some of these full coverages, but not, not have to focus totally on one. So anyway, we'll talk about it later. So moving on to 2021 starts. Uh, my first one was One Nation by Bygone Stitches. This is what it will look like when it's finished. 
And this is where it was at the end of 2021. This was a whip go call for December, so it actually got quite a bit of work this month. And this is where it is now. So it's, uh, this is on 28 count, so it's pretty big. You can see the whole piece of fabric. Um, so there's still more to go on that right side, but I'm gonna, this is, uh, this portion is like two pages. So I'm working with part of this over here is one part on one of the pages. So I'm working the lines down on those two pages and then I'll decide whether I wanna go over here and work that to get it right, which is probably what I'll do. And then I'll probably start down here at the bottom after that. Next one is another full coverage, which is Quarantine Cats, which is another Heaven and Earth Designs pattern. Uh, the artwork is by I don't remember who the artwork is by. Treasure Hunt Bookshelf is Amy Stewart. <coughs> I don't remember who the artwork is by on this one. It's in my spreadsheet below. Um, anyway, so this is where, this is what it will look like when it's finished. This is where it was at the end of 2021. And here's where I am now. All of my full coverages, unless I mention it otherwise, are on 25 count, even weave, one over one. Um, you'll see most of the future ones, except maybe one more are on, are on you know, most of the future ones are gonna be on Easy Grid, but this was before I discovered Easy Grid. I think that this one is my largest full coverage stitch count wise. Next is The Tree of Magic by Barbara Anna. This is a kit that can only be bought through um, Nitka, which is a Russian company, so I'm not sure if you can get it right now. There's kind of like sort of the pattern picture. I'll put a picture up here of what it will look like when it's finished. And here's what it looked like at the end of 2021. And here's where it is now. So I've got the first, the top two rows done. This actually stitches up pretty quick, so hopefully I might get that one done this year too. I don't know. I haven't, I have not set any specific goals on finishing things. But. Uh, next is a kit from Owl Folk Embroidery, Owl Forest Embroidery called Bayoun Cat. This is what it will look like when it's finished. This is what it looked like at the end of 2021. And here's where it is now. And as you're noticing, I did not iron all these. I currently have 39 whips and I was not ironing all of them, sorry. So some of them are very wrinkled and I'm sorry about that if that bothers you, but it doesn't bother me enough to iron them all. <clears throat> Next is O Feathers by Rosewood Manor. This is what it will look like when it's finished. This is being stitched with a sulky pack. So it's, uh, I think it's on 36 count. But one thread, because sulky 12 weight. This is where it was at the end of 2021. 
And here's where it is now. This one's nice and fun and colorful. But it's a lot of color changes. Next is the Snow Queen by Mirabilia. It will look like this when it is finished. This is what it looked like at the end of 2021. And this is where it is now. Next is Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. This is what the full pattern will look like when it's finished. This is what it looked like at the beginning, uh, at the end of 2021. And here's where it is now. I finished box one and two. Next is Halloween Quaker, which will look, uh, which is by Leela Studio. It will look like this when it's finished. It looks like this the last uh, at the end of 2021, and this one is really wrinkled. So hopefully I can hold it up so you can see it well enough. And this is what it looks like now. I'm doing this mostly in the called for. Um, I am doing, uh, making a couple of minor changes. This, so like this is the called for here, but when I pulled it, I wasn't sure it was going to show up, which it does, but I had pulled another color, this one up here, as an alternative in case this one didn't show up. And so I've used it up here instead of a black, just to break up a little bit of the black. So, so I'm making a few minor modifications just as I go and as I feel the desire. <coughs> Next is Winter Cabin, which is a dimensions kit. This was my birthday start in 2021. It will look like this when it's finished. Um, this is what it looked like at the end of 2021. And this is where it is now. Excuse me. This is the wool shop, which is another heaven and earth design. It will look like this when it's finished. The artwork for this one is by Lucy Pittaway. Uh, it looks like this at the beginning or at the end of 2021. And here's where it is now. This is the top left corner, so it's just a bunch of blue sky with some white snowflakes. Hopefully, I'm soon, I think somewhere down right in here, I'm starting to get, I will get to like the top of a lamp post or something. <laughs> so. This is... Uh, Moonlight Sampler by The Blue Flower. This is what it will look like when it's finished. And this is what it looked like at the end of 2021. 
And here's where it is now. I love this one. This says, Through, though my soul may set in darkness, it will rise in perfect light. I have loved the stars too firmly to be fearful of the night. I kind of think of this as a little bit of a companion to Night Walks Down. I don't know if it was intended to be or not, but, and I will do Night Walks Down once this one is finished. Or Night Walked Down, I think is the name of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and next is Reindeer Games by Erica Michael. I am doing the square one in the frame there. And this is what it looked like at the end of 2021. This was also a go for December, so it's recently gotten a good bit of work. And this is where we are now. So everything from like here up is done except for the running stitch that goes around the words. So I'm going to do all that at one, at the end probably because I will probably do that in hand. Excuse me. This is Winter Rose Manor by With Thy Needle and Thread, ben Brenda Gervais. That's what it looked like when it's finished. This is what it looked like at the end of 2021. And this is where I am now. This is the top of the big house. I don't know. You can see it more in person. I don't know if you can see that I've started a little bit of the white basket on top just because I didn't really want to leave the house for the very end and then my last star of 2021 was actually my 2022 temperature chart um, I'm not going to show you the picture I have what it'll look like at the end is in black and white, so it's not going to show you much of anything. Um, and this, actually, is still on a Q-snap because I have a few more days of December left. But let me uh, take this off so I can show you at least where it is so far. So, this is where it is now. I don't think I have an end of 2021 picture because all I had done is just start the top of the bookcase before the first of the year so that I would be ready to start on the first. <clears throat> so this is caught up through, I think the 25th, 24th or 25th. So I've just got to do the last few days of December. I will probably tomorrow do everything through today and then that way, shortly after midnight tomorrow night, I can, uh, shortly after New Year's, I can do the last day of the month and take that and be finished with that one. <coughs> Again, I'm really sorry about all the coughing. Talking irritates me. Irritates my throat and makes me cough more. So that was everything started through 2021. So everything else that I have to show you was started in 2022. So there's not a before picture. I'll just show you where I am now. First up is Pandemic by Long Dog Sampler. This was my New Year New Start. It will look like this when it's finished. And this is how far I've gotten. I'm doing this in a Silks For You silk. My phone does not pick up the color variegation very well. You can probably see a little bit of the blue variegation. And then the animals are in a little bit more of a greenish blue.
Next is Sleepy Hollow by Glendon Place. This is what it will look like when it's finished. I started this as a center start so that I could, if I started top left, I didn't, I would, I didn't want to work nothing but this border forever. So I started in the middle and worked my way out to the border so that I can work a little bit of border as I go. <coughs> and this is where it is now. I'm doing this uh, in the called for anchor floss um, on the spools. And uh, just in case anybody's curious, the way I do that is I pull, I pull off a length of floss and then I put it on the fl a floss card that I have labeled with the numbers and symbols. And then you know, once I'm, once I use a length, the next time I get to that color, I pull another length off. So, next is, I need to flip the page on my thing to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, Winter White Santa, which is a Miravilla. This is what it will look like when it's finished. figure out which way's up and which way's down. I think that's right. It doesn't look like much of anything but a blob at the moment because I started in the middle on this. <coughs> this is Chronicles of Narnia. <coughs> Excuse me. This was a stitch along through Sapphire Mountain Craft Stitching Book Club, which, you know, the stitch along's well over. I'm just not done. I haven't worked on this in a while. So this is where I am. Um, I fit, this was the first part. So this was a three part thing. And this was the first part, which is done. The second part I've done, except I have not done all the back stitching in it. And then I haven't done the third part. This is Cardinal Points, which is a pattern by Long Dog, Long Dog Samplers, but was done for the Gentle Art using gentle arch threads. This is what it will look like. And it says, the gentle art of a needlewoman lies embodied in her work. So I am doing this with all the called for gentle arts. And this is as far as I've gotten. I need to get a little closer to show you the colors, but there we go. Hmm. I'm seeing a reflection. I'm not sure if you're seeing that same reflection or not, so. Next up is a tisket, a tasket by Rosewood Manor. This is what it will look like when it's finished. And this is how far I've gotten. This has a lot of color changes, so I'm using I'm using multiple needles over here. This is Let Love Rain 
by Teresa Kogut. I'm gonna, I have the book, but I'm gonna put a picture in of what it will look like when it's finished because the pattern, the picture that shows the whole thing is buried in the book. So it'll be easier, I think, to put a picture in. I have not gotten very far on this one. That's as far as I've done on that. This was one of those starts that I worked on, I think, mainly just the day I started, and that was it. Next one is Kringles by Little House Needleworks. And this is, this is as far as I've gotten. Just the top left corner of the shop. I'm doing that on the called for fabric, whatever it is. <coughs> this is, I think, my last full coverage. Yep. This is Blue Ridge. I bought this, let's see, I got this from crossstitch.com. The artwork is by Derek McRae. Um, it will look like this when it's finished. And that's as far as I've gotten. This is a much smaller full coverage. It will only be, I mean, that's the full width of it. This is Rejoice Evermore by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. This was my Stitch Con start, and I did very little on it, and I have not touched it since. <laughs> so it's not very big of a start. But that's where, whoops, that's where I am. So just a little bit of the top border. This is Lady Liberty by Twin Peak Primitives. It will look like this when it's finished. <coughs> this is uh, part of a trilogy. A stitch along that Pam from Stitching and, no, Pam from Pam and Steph, Just Keep Stitching, started this year. I started with Liberty Liberty. I, don't know yet if I'm going to do any more of them. I really like this one, but so and that's as far as I've gotten. This is Rosanna Dissery. 1820. This is a picture of what it will look like when it's finished. Uh, the pattern was done by works by ABC from a sampler by an African American student that is in a museum up north somewhere. I don't remember the details. Sorry. Um, and this is all I've done. Just like the top left motif. This is A Way We Ride by Blackbird Designs. This is what the pattern looks like. I am doing it as it looks, except I have pulled my own flosses and I am making it a little more gray than brown. So instead of a brown fabric and all the blacks, I'm doing a grayish fabric and I've 
changed some of the browns to more grays and I'm adding kind of a slate blue and I'm just kind of doing it as I go. So that's where I am. So we will have a similar stark look, just a little more gray than brown as the original pattern. This is The Mandalorian by uh, Forbidden Fiber Co. There we go. Picture somewhere. This is what it will look like when it's finished. I bought this as a kit, so I'm doing it with all the called for. The only change I'm making is I have moved Grogu over about 11 or so stitches so that he looks a little more centered to me over the first part of the name. So... This is as far as I've gotten. I basically got the line in so that I could then figure out where to actually start Grogu. This is Sir Thomas, otherwise known as that damn turkey that uh, Justine from X's and Hoes and Pam from Stitch and Atlanta good enough both started and I looked at there's enough I finally had to start the darn thing. Um, I started in the middle and have worked up to the neck because I still have not decided if I'm doing that corn border. It's horribly fantastic in my mind and I just, I yeah, I can't decide. So, I think I'm probably just going to stitch Sir Thomas first and see how I feel about him by himself before I start on that corn border. <coughs> and this is as far as I've gotten. This is The Haunted Library, which was a stitch along by Lola Crow Designs this past fall. I just have not finished. Um, I have this, actually this is the one project bag I'll show you because it is a new one that I just got from my friend Peggy for Christmas. Um, it's one from the Barefoot Needle Art in Myrtle Beach, North Carolina. Memory, one of the owners, makes them. Um, this is what the Haunted Library will look like when it's finished. And as I said, the stitch along ended like the end of October, but I'm just not done. So, this is where I am. And Peggy bought me this specifically for this project because my last episode, I had it in a, I think I had that one in the space bag. And I commented that, you know, I like to keep, in where possible, themed bags to my project. And I just didn't have one of the Halloween bags. So she saw that and decided that I needed one. <clears throat> this is, what is this? This is Good Company by Plum Street Samplers. This was my birthday start this year. I bought this as a kit. <coughs> so I'm using the called for fabric and floss. And this is where I am.
This is Autumn Cloche by Hello from Liz Matthews. Of this, I am doing this in the called for NPI silks. Started in the bottom left because of that was where the flat was, and that's where I am. Almost there. This is uh, Mr. February Gnome by Charlie's Needle, which will look like this when it's finished. I am doing this monthly series, hoping to get mostly done by the end of 2023. We'll see. <coughs> and this is still in the Q snap because I'll probably work on this some tomorrow. This is where I am now. This is on 20 Count Ada Hibiscus by uh, Bastitch Me. I have not been telling you fabrics and stuff. But like I said, that's all in the spreadsheet below if you want to know what a fabric is. <clears throat> and then my last one was my last new start of 2022. Um which is Moons Out, Brooms Out by Autumn Lane Stitchery. This is what it will look like when it's finished. And this is how far I've gotten. So that is, that are, those are all of my whips. I feel like I ought to have that whip sound that Stephanie does. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so plans for 2023 for cross stitch. I am doing whip go again. I picked 24 of my projects that were not full coverage. Did not put any of my full coverage on the whip go board. Um, and I didn't put the what the projects that are were smaller and have the potential to be finished reasonably anyway. Like the happily ever after is not on my whip go board because I think I can finish that. I don't think I put it on there. Maybe I did. I don't remember <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> but I picked twenty four of the projects um, and did not put any full coverage on there. So my Tentative goal for WhipGo is 10 hours per project each month as a minimum. Um, I say my tentative goal because work is getting ready to get very busy for me at some point early in the year. I don't know if that will start in February or if it will be March before it gets that busy. There's going to be three or four months probably this spring where work is just going to be really busy and I don't it may not be possible, literally not possible, to get 10 hours on two different projects um, in a couple of those months um, because there are weeks when I don't craft at all when work is just busy because I just don't have the brain space for it. So so right now my tentative goal is, is 10 hours on each project on the whip go board per month um, or as close to it as I can get in that month if it's just one of those crazy months. Once we get past June, July, hopefully I can definitely get 10 hours, but we'll see. Um, then I also have, I have seven full coverage projects. So I have designated a month for each one of those for it to be the focus. And then for five of them, the five, ex, the five that are not Winter Cabin and Blue Ridge, which are my two smaller full coverages, the other five will also get an additional month that they're my full coverage focus for that month. We'll see how that goes. Um, my goal on that each on the full coverage each month is to get at least 2,000 stitches in it. Um, hopefully more than that, but I'm setting my goals reasonably. I just want to make progress on all of them. I'm still trying to figure out, I'm toying, that's right now my plan. I'm, I'm, toying with the idea and I will decide 
I guess by March, of taking my oldest one, which is Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, and making it the focus on January, which it already is, moving to the next one in February, and then going back to Treasure Hunt in March so that every other month I'm doing Treasure Hunt, and then that would leave the other six to get a month each so that I make more progress on Treasure Hunt this year since it's my oldest and work that way. But I don't know. I haven't decided yet. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. <coughs> I have a struggle in the full coverage with wanting to really see some noticeable progress, but not wanting to let the other ones languish without any progress. Um, like the wool shop, you know, is huge. The quarantine cats, I think, is like almost 600,000 stitches. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, obviously, quarantine cats is going to take a while. Um, it might be 20 years. But, anyway, other than that, right now, my plan is I will cycle through, uh, other than Whip Go and the Full Coverage Focus, I'm going to cycle through the rest of my projects. Right now, I'm planning in the order that they were started and do at least 500 stitches on it before I move to the next one. Um, if I want to work on it for you know, 3,000 stitches, that's fine, but I need to do at least 500 on it before I move to the next one. Um, and the only exception to that being, as far as the rotation goes, being that, like, for example, January Treasure Hunt Bookshelf is my full coverage focus. And that's also my first project on the rotation, so I'll actually start with Kingdom of Books and do at least 500 stitches before I move on to the next project that that I chronologically started. We'll see how that goes. Um, you know, if that, I don't know, we'll, we'll just see. So my tentative plan is to try to do at least five hours each week on one of my whip goes, do at least 500 stitches or so on the full coverage, if not more, and then get through at least 500 stitches on one of the other projects in the regular rotation. Um, again, we'll see. I'll, you know, it, it's ever evolving. I'm not setting any hard and fast goals this year. I'm not setting any overall goals on like how many stitches on an individual project. There are several projects that I would like to get finished and I think could easily be finished happily ever after. Narnia. Um, probably good company. Some of the smaller finishes are the reindeer games is, is probably close enough that it could be finished this year. Um, but I'm at this point not setting any actual goals for that. I'll probably reassess once work is not so busy later this summer and decide at that point where I am and how it's been going and, you know, if pick then maybe some things to focus on to, to get finished. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> of course, all of that is not accounting for any new starts that I choose to make. Um, I am planning to start Dragonfly Mandala, which is a Chatelaine on New Year's Day. Um, and also, the 500 stitches applies to any new starts. Any new starts that I make, I have to do at least 500 stitches in them if I start them. Um, but that is the only planned new start that I have. Um, I, you know, I have tons of patterns that I would love to start. I have tons of things kitted that I would love to start, but that's the only planned new start I have. I have uh, abandoned the idea of doing a small for the beach retreat, which is the first weekend in February, um, mainly because, well, that could I could change my mind in the next two weeks, but if I do it, I've got to do it in the next two weeks and fully finish it pretty much in the next two weeks because we are leaving on the 20th for a cruise that we will return on the 29th and then the, which is a Sunday, and then the retreat is the very next weekend. So I most likely will not have time between the end of the cruise and the retreat to fully finish a small. So um, unless... I decide to pick a Mill Hill kit and take it on the cruise and work on it. I probably am not going to do a small for Beach Retreat. So, anyway, I am not planning any uh, year-long stitch-alongs. I am not planning to do a temperature chart next year. I really love the Modern Folk Embroidery 2023 piece. Um, it's very reminiscent of the 2021 Fruits of Plenty that I did as far as the 
negative space and the two-tone and all that. And I'm not saying I might not start that at some point, but I am not going to do it as a stitch along where I keep up with it each month. So um, if I start it, I will just start it as a regular project. So um, yeah, like I said, lots of things that I would love to start, but nothing that's really forefront in my mind at the moment. Of course, that could all change when market happens. Um, we'll see. I am collecting the new carriage house sampling snowmen, but I probably won't do anything with those this year. We'll see. Anyway, I think that's about it. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at all my whips. Uh, the next episode sometime in early January, hopefully we will be back to regular and I'll show you just what I've worked on in the past couple weeks and uh, the knitting stuff that I have been working on. And anyway, I think that's about it for now. I hope you all have a wonderful uh, New Year's Eve. You are staying at home um, because of my cough. We had planned to go to some friends, um, but we were going to hang out outside around a bonfire, and that would not be good for my cough. And with the cruise coming up in three weeks, I really want to be done with the cough before then. <coughs> but... Actually, it looks like it may rain all night tomorrow night, so the bonfire may not have happened anyway. Um, I hope you all have a happy new year, and I will see you in 2023. Bye, y'all.